Welcome to The Truth in This Art. I am your host, Rob Lee. And today, I'm on location. I'm here at um, Couples Tea House with the owners of Couples Tea House. Hey, they're a Baltimore-based, small, black-owned, and woman-owned uh, business selling uh, premium loose-leaf tea, tea accessories, and uh, tea education. Um, their particular niche is uh, they're devoted to elevating your tea experience. Please welcome Lynette and Eric Dotson. Welcome to the podcast. Woo! <laughs> I like that rousing <laughs> kind of energy right there. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, again, thank you both for, for being on here and uh, chatting it up with me, or agreeing to chat it up with me. This could go left, who knows. But I, I want to start off, before we get too deep in uh, the conversation, by kind of opening it up to allow you guys to speak about like the story. How how do we get here? What's the uh, Eric and Lynette Dodson story? <laughs> Eric and Lynette start at Morgan State University, Woo-woo. where we met. Um, just totally organic. We worked together at Morgan State, and and we started becoming friends at Morgan State University, and then that carried over uh, years later into a full blown relationship. And if you let my husband tell it, there was prom gowns and smoke and smoke involved on our first date. <laughs> Yes, yes. <laughs> I don't remember that so much, but he does. Well, that just means that the first date was so special to me. That's how I That's envision how you, it. I envision I gotcha. it being uh, you coming into the place with a long, white, flowing gown on and gown. smoke coming in. <laughs> into a record in, store, mind you. <laughs> smoke coming in, and I'm just being captivated and swept away. And so everything, that, the time stop. And stopped. time stop. Gotcha. You're the only people gotcha. moving. And um, that's the way I remember it. So fast forward, um, you know, 11 no, more than 11 years. We've been married 11 years, but that was probably 16 years ago. Yeah. Um, and you know, fast friends became, uh, in you know, husband and wife, yeah. I guess. And, um, and somehow business somehow partners. Somehow business partners. <laughs> and, and it all happened literally as it relates to business partners around us blending our families and wanting to create something for our daughters a legacy to live to leave to our children and the thing that we Lynette and I most I I think related to or was a big part of our our relationship or the building of our relationship was our conversations around tea and we literally dated around tea <laughs> um, and it happened to coincide with us also wanting to make some health changes uh, getting rid of getting rid of the sugary beverages and the carbonated beverages and um, I was diagnosed with diabetes around 2007 so I had to make some lifestyle changes and Lynette being the caregiving loving person that she is she definitely um, took care of me yeah. uh, and made sure that, you know, I was doing all the things that I needed to do to be healthy. And that was really centered around tea. So that's how we, and then we, you know, starting a business. Hey, why, why not tea? Tea's a, tea's a great business model and it's a great beverage and it's healthy and it's, you know, community centered so yeah we so we started building a plan we started building a plan to uh figure out how we were going to do this and we started out doing farmers markets and pop-ups and then that turned into tea tastings and then that turned into private you know workshops in people's homes and and we always thought that we wanted to do a brick and mortar store um, but when we started, we did the World of Tea Conference in Las Vegas. The, well, it wasn't Las Vegas, but <laughs> the first year. And it was in San Diego, was it? Yeah. Long Beach, California. Long Beach. Um, the first year. And we got there and got like a rude awakening. And they're like, you don't want to do a brick and mortar. Yeah. You don't know if people are going to come to a brick and mortar. You don't know if you have an audience for that. <laughs> And so we kind of took a step back and was like, okay, so let's con- concentrate on these uh, markets and putting ourselves in front of people. Yeah, yeah. we were told we were told to go to go mobile. 
and put your product and your brand in front of as many people as possible. We started out as an online business, yeah. but then as Lynette said, we got out and put a couple of Seahouse brand in front of as many people as we can. And like she said, farmers markets, pop-ups, we were doing church churches, libraries, senior <laughs> centers. At one point we had like uh, four or five farmers markets a week. A week. Wow. We were doing uh, <laughs> schools. Yeah. Talking to faculty and staff about the importance of tea, the health benefits of tea. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of how we got the brand out there. And, you know, then, you know, some seven years later got brave enough to say, let's open a brick and mortar. Yeah. And I, and I think, you know, so you guys have been down here since 2020, 2021. It's November 2021. Yeah, coming up on a year. So... And it's still during a pandemic, and that is mm-hmm. that definitely is the leap. And I think that there's a an interesting story that this cluster of businesses, um, Kaju as well, mm-hmm. Vegan Juiceology as well, black owned businesses mm-hmm. right here, kind of in the heart of Baltimore. You're not far mm-hmm. from from like downtown proper. It's like literally right here. Yeah. And I just think that that's a testament, and just taking that attempt and doing doing more because each one of these businesses has a health orientation around it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we call it uh healthy Howard Row healthy Howard Row. is what it's kind of tagged as. I like it. Mm-hmm. So I wanna I wanna talk about uh tea training. Is that even a thing? Um mm-hmm. so like was there any travel, right, that kind of exposed you to different teas, different tea culture that you wanted to implement into your own shop or your own brand? I think the biggest thing that we did and when researching do you know researching opening a tea shop first thing that popped up was if you're serious about opening a tea shop attend the world of tea conference mm. and I think in terms of traveling that was the first place where we basically were injected into tea culture at such a mass level. You're talking a convention center full of teas from around the world, tea purveyors, tea companies, tea everything, tea education. And that's kind of how we got dropped into it. And that began our serious journey as uh, tea shop owners and tea brand owners. Because, you know, anybody can. And I'm going to order tea and sell it. Yeah. But it was important for us and still remains important to this day that we know what we're talking about, that we have relationships with um, the people that we source from, the people that we blend with, that we have an understanding of this thing called tea yeah. and what it does for um, the, the community. Yeah, I agree. Um, <clears throat> and it also important was curating our menu. Sure. Um, so while we haven't traveled to you know some of these tea growing regions, um, we have <laughs> I've traveled to different tea houses within the U S. Yeah, right. mm-hmm. and um, and we actually make it a point when we travel to go to to find black owned tea houses around the country that we like to visit. <clears throat> we've we've made some pretty good friendships with folks, um, and we're all all in the tea game together. Sure. And so you know we say it's a it's enough enough to spread around yeah. so you know we're not intimidated by meeting other people we're not you know we don't find that there's any strict competition with any yeah. of these people yeah. we just like to have those friendships um but that, yeah and, and that's helped us you know curate the menu that's helped us to figure out how we wanted to put this place together yeah. um and it's always been around like the tea is, is obviously the main thing but we also wanted to, our, our tagline is the urban tea experience. Yeah. So we wanted to include that with books and music and art um, in this space. Yeah. You know, and so I think that's what we did. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, she's you know those relationships with those other tea companies, even the local ones where we've met with with local tea companies and say, hey, what are you guys doing? This is your niche. This is what we're doing. I don't know why, you know, (laughs) will people even like this? And having those conversations locally and and, and nationally uh, has been great for us. And um, I think it has given us some more exposure, too, because people are talking about Couples Tea House. I mean, we're in the latest edition of Tea Time magazine. (laughs) Um, 
North America's number one tea oh magazine, by the way. <laughs> um, which is big, yeah. you know. That that means that we are now at the table in conversations with real tea people. Right. You know, we're just not, you know, it's not a hobby for us. This is serious for us to have an understanding about what this beverage is, what it means, and what it can do as, an, as it um, relates to bringing our community together. So, And it, one of the things that I, I really dig about this location is it doesn't, it feels like it's a tea house, but it also feels like it's a community community gathering space. Yeah. Yeah. And, and there's some intentionality there. And I think the key word that people look for when they're building out brands and the thought that goes into it, the intentionality that goes into it is experience. Mm. You know, you want to feel a certain way when you go to a certain place. Oh, look what we have here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's, I think that's huge. I think that's important. And once I think when someone's being brought to and connected to something like tea, mm -hmm. like let's say a, a healthier, this healthy uh, Howard Rowe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's like it's more than just the item. It's yeah. more than just the name that's there. The experience is the key part there. So I, I love that. Yeah. And I think people come in, you know, for like we do a tea flight, yeah. right? So much like a wine flight or a beer flight, but it's flight with tea, sure. right? People love that. Yeah. People love being able to sample different teas. And it gives them, you know, um, I guess enough of that, uh, I don't say trendy, but, you know, when, when you're doing these flights, it, it seems just kind of... It gives it gives them an experience. It gives them an experience. Because it's more than just coming in, grabbing a hot cup of tea and leaving. Yeah. yeah. It's sitting in a space, you're sampling four different types of tea, you've got the art on the wall, you've got the music, you've got the community, you've got people all around you saying, hey, what's that you're drinking? That looks nice. Yeah. You know? And it, it creates um, a vibe, a vibe of, of intentional organicness, I guess as you call it. I always tell people, um, when people come in and say, this is my first time here, I don't know what to do. And I always say, sit down and be your organic self. Be you yeah. and drink some tea and then let it just go from there. Yeah. You know, and um, I, the space is designed intentionally um, to do just that, you know. And, All of it, yeah. yeah. When, we, when we built this place, um, and I'd like to talk a little bit more about that too. Please. Uh, when we built this place, there's an area in the back that has uh, four stools that we're supposed to do tea tastings. And those that tea tasting was a, is an opportunity for people to find out about the, the Camellia sinensis plant, which is the plant that all teas derive from. It's an opportunity for them to find out some of the medicinal properties that go along with tea, opportunity to find out, you know, expose them to different flavors and tastes. And so that was intentionally put there, you know, for that reason. Um, but to talk a little bit more about how we got this place, yep. um, we entered into something called a storefront challenge. And the storefront challenge was one year, if you won, one year free rent and the build out. And so we were one of two winners. <laughs> And uh, so we got this place. We knew that we got it like a week before the pandemic. Pandemic hit. Right. <laughs> and it's like, so, yay, we won. Oh, man, we lost. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and so we knew by the end of February 2020 that we had got this place. Yeah. It was a shell. It was literally three walls and a window. It was no floor in here. It was no bathroom in here. It was nothing. And uh, so we had to sit on that news. We had to sit on that until the fall when they finally, you know, announced it. And then we still didn't know where the pandemic was going to take us. Yeah. Um, so in the fall 2020, we started making plans. We met with the designer. We would sit in these in these walls, masked up, and doors open, and you know. Yeah. Um, and and we just came up with a plan, and, and they helped us put the vision together. And then we filled in the gaps from there. I, I think that that experience, as as horrific as it sounds, in the middle of a pandemic, helped us really focus on on the space and what it. You know, mm -hmm. you think about it, they were shutting spaces down. 
they were cutting capacity down. Yeah. So, you know, we had grand plans for this to be a bookstore, music cafe, the whole nine. But that made us focus on, well, let's create something intimate and safe and some space that um, people feel warm and at home in because uh, we don't know what this means and what the future of this this pandemic means mm -hmm. as it relates to gathering. Gathering is real important to us. It was it was always intended to be a gathering space. Yeah. So um, I think that caused us to sit back and really evaluate, okay, what does this space mean or what should this space mean for people who come into the door? And as we move through the pandemic, we realized that gathering was going to be so much more important right yeah. um because you know now hadn't. because people hadn't right. so how can we make this comfortable how can we put a couch in how can we put a big window seat in how can we make people feel like you have come to eric and lynette's house and mm -hmm. you're getting some good music you're getting good food some tea and you can just be your organic self because we just went through hell yeah. you know what i mean yeah. and so it was really intentional as lynette said that we made this space the way it is um with you know, we, we, it's funny because in one of our mission statements, we say it's not just a retail space. Right. It's not just a cafe. It's a space where people say, man, I want to go to Howard Street because a couple tea house is there. Hey, I want to go into the city because I know there's a space called Couples Tea House. And that was intentional for us. And I think being in an art district like this, um, to offer creatives the space to be, you know, creative and communities to have community conversations. Mm -hmm. I think that, um, I think we've accomplished that. Yeah. I, I can say like from a firsthand sort of perspective, right. Mm -hmm. And every now and again, I'll go to places, I'll make the rounds like, Hey, Rob Lee here, here's my card. You know, yeah. want to do an interview. And and Lynette can attest to this. I stayed. I was here for like maybe an hour and a half. I had lunch and did the whole Inside thing. Inside and outside. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 that's, and I think that's the magic that's there, what have you. And, you know, for me, I'm a person, if I like a place, I'm going to go there. I'm going to probably get the same thing every time. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be an advocate for it in this regard. So when I left from here, I went to the studio and I had, I, I think it was the ginger shot or what have you. Mm -hmm. with me. And, um, the person I work with, that's the director there. I was like, Oh yeah, I got this from this tea spot down at Howard street, mm -hmm. couple's tea. Mm -hmm. And I'm just kind of almost commercial on that. Mm -hmm. And she was like, Oh, they make these. I was like, it's down there. She go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And even when, um, I think before I even came here, um, it's like, I knew of it, but hadn't been down here. Cause I don't make it over here too often and I'm super busy. Mm -hmm. Um, but there was they were filming a documentary here and the folks from the documentary mm -hmm. they're a black couple they were like mm -hmm. you know what's the response to the pandemic how creative mm -hmm. how business doing it and I was like go down to Howard Street mm -hmm. it's in an arts district there's three black businesses you should check out mm -hmm. yeah. and that's literally how I pitched it sight unseen just based on the social media presence and things that I read I was like you gotta get down there yeah. and then I thought about I was like I gotta get down there yeah. you tell people to go and I haven't been <laughs> so I wanted to um, key in on two things because we, we talked about the medicinal benefits a little bit and mm -hmm. we talked about um, just like tea in a, a sort of macro way. So I read that there's a tea for everyone. Mm -hmm. So uh, could you share some of those offerings that are here that are kind of like outside of that norm? Like I've had oolong, I've had black tea, yeah. but um, t tell us a little bit more about some of the offerings here and like what's the thinking that goes into that? Well, we have over 52 <laughs> teas on our menu, uh, ranging from your oolongs to your mates to your black teas, green teas, herbal teas. We've got, um, let's see, we've got tea bag uh, gallon pouches. We've got pitcher size pouches. We've got some loose leaf satchets. So we've got a, a, a really large selection. In fact, more than we thought we were going to start off with. <laughs> if you let Eric tell it, he's like, we're supposed to have five peas. <laughs> Let's just multiply that times ten real quick. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, so, so we, again, because we wanted to 
because we wanted to make sure that, you know, we, we touched everyone or sure. tried to touch everybody. Um, we've got at least four, three or four of each of those varieties of teas. Um, we've got some single origin teas, um, such as just your black Ceylon Sonata teas and, and just straight <laughs> Grass, uh, no, what do you call it? Golf course grass. Golf course grass teas. <laughs> golf course Just, grass teas. <laughs> yeah. People um, like golf course grass teas. That's so what yeah. they taste smell like. But, but yeah, you know, trying to, you know, part of our journey was learning about tea. Mm -hmm. um, we come from, dare I say, where most tea drinkers in Baltimore probably come from, the L word. <laughs> <clears throat> Lipton tea with tons of sugar and lemon as a nice tea. Yes. Now, black tea... Nothing wrong it, with it. Nothing wrong with it. That's where we came from. Mm -hmm. um, but we were also fortunate to come from parents and grandparents who also knew the value of herbs and 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 using tea as a wellness, wellness drink. Mm -hmm. um, Baltimore is a half and half city. Give me black tea with lemonade. That is a, it's a sweet tea and lemonade mm. city. And trying to get people to understand and trust that you can get the same sort of flavor from, you know, mm. an herbal, from a oolong, from a mate, and, you know, and it's a big coffee town. I love coffee. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, I've got a tea that tastes like coffee or, or has the same caffeine content as coffee and, and those things uh, were very important to us because we know and we know there's a tea for, for everyone, but not everybody knows there's a tea for them. Mm -hmm. Right. And so it's important for us when people come through the door and say, I'm not a tea person. I'm just a coffee person. I would say, well, what flavor do you like? Mm -hmm. Well, I like orange. I like, okay, here's well, here's, here's a blood orange mm -hmm. for you. Or oh, I like, you know, I like black tea with lemon. Okay, well, here's a black tea with lemongrass yeah. or, or, or something like that. So it's important for us to identify what people's flavors are so that we can say, okay, here's a tea for you. Mm -hmm. And not only for that, we, you know, in our selection of teas to offer, we say, okay, let's be, let's be strategic about this. We know that, you know, people aren't going to like um, a certain type, certain green teas sure. yeah. in our community. Um, but let's present it with a name called Autumn Leaves or something familiar like a Moroccan mint or a blue and orange. We have a tea called Afro Blue. We have a tea called Black is Beautiful. Yeah. So that we create these tea blends with names that, okay, that sounds like something I might like. I may like a almond oolong because yeah. I, I like almonds, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and then that gives us the opportunity to help them figure out what tea is for them. And once they discover um, because a lot of people want to try it. They want to try tea. They know the benefits of tea. They know they shouldn't be drinking 40 ounces of soda. They know this. This is true. Um, uh, but once we help them identify their flavor, then we can help them in their process of selecting what teas they might like. And then what that does is that opens them up to trying other things. Mm -hmm. It's like, wow, I really like this berry blast tea yeah. because it has the cranberries, the hibiscus, and it's got the, the flavors that I like. But well, let me look at this peach paradise or let me look at this um, blueberry passion herbal. Yeah. Because, you know, and it opens them up. Mm -hmm. um, I think when, when most people come through the doors, they are apt to try. I mean, we still have folks, you know. Die-hard coffee folks, um, but when <laughs> we got people to come in and say, "Can I get a cup of coffee?" I'm like, "No, nope. sir, you cannot get a cup of coffee." <laughs> um, but I think most people are, are up to trying yeah. a different teas when they come in. Because when you walk through this door, it's intentional. It's intentional that you're walking in a couple see how to drink tea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think, like Lynette said, some people are open. We have this regular customer, man. He's like, I want black tea, period. I want black tea, ice, nothing, period. <laughs> like, don't try okay. to let me, don't try to let try. me taste other teas because I'm not going to like it. Because I'm not going to like it. I don't want anything else. <laughs> now, 
He's like, oh, let me try that black sunshine with mm-hmm. the lemongrass. Mm-hmm. Oh, let me try that Earl Grey with the bergamot mm-hmm. and the mm-hmm. orange. Mm-hmm. Well, let me try this now. I was like, okay, we mm-hmm. got you. Yeah. We got you. Let me try that Pue hazelberry with the strawberry flavor. Yeah, we got you, Mr. All I Wanted was Black Tea. Now, don't, don't get me started about bergamot now. I'm Bobby Bergamot. It, 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 it's mm-hmm. fine. It, it's I it's just, fine. I just had a, a, a London <laughs> Fog. I'm sitting there drinking a London Fog right now. So it, it's intentional in what we do to try to satisfy our customer Mm -hmm. but we also want to educate them as well so we get you in the door we give you something that you like oh i really like the way this tea tastes well if you like that you may like this you may like this elderberry you know so listen i mean we we and we say it all and it's everywhere we are not your mama's tea house right right. so you're not gonna get here, not that we don't want to present it, but, you know, some specific Chinese teas or some specific Taiwanese teas, you're not going to get that here. Right. It might be um, named something else, though. <laughs> right. So, you know, we don't do the tea ceremonies here and all those things. We'd love to, the space just doesn't permit us to yeah, do it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Because we'd like to expand uh, their tea knowledge. Yeah. You know, I would love for them to, you know, practice, give, give practice, foundation. give them some foundation and maybe we come up with uh, our own cultures, be more tea ceremony that we create <laughs> here or, or something. Um, Is that the art of mixing half lemon and half tea? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, you know, the, the, the art of the half and half, you know, there's a whole ceremony mm. behind it. Right. You got a name off all of West Side Streets. And then the east side. Street. Oh my gosh! <laughs> then hit a gong. So, so hit a gong. I, I want to talk about. Uh, I got two more questions before I get to those okay. rapid fire questions. Uh, so, the, t- pairing the the menu right with like the tea being the tea is like you know focal point and, and the front. What were some of the considerations in like planning out the menu um, and like what fits on there? Because initially, before I came down here, I was like, oh, this is going to be vegan. There's going to be nothing in here for me. I, I, I'll just say this. I had a bad experience with some vegan and gluten-free cookies that really bugged me. Yeah. It was yeah. the only thing I had the whole day. And I was like, come on, you, you got to do better, Rob. <laughs> I'm one of those dudes that I won't eat. And then when I need to eat, it's just like, what's over here? What's, what's, yeah. Is there a brick I can chew on? Like, yeah. what is it? Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, from day one, minute one, day one, I always said, we're going to have some bacon in here. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> like, I don't she, care what she, we she serve. She's not lying. We're going to have bacon. <laughs> Um, but yet, yeah, knowing that you know it's been coined uh, healthy Howard Row, uh, we wanted to make sure that you know we offered selections for everybody. Yeah. Um, so while we're not, you know, fried chicken and you know that kind of stuff, yeah, we, we did do, have we chicken and waffles we did, last oh, week. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we want to make sure we want to make sure everybody is is covered. Yeah. Um, you know, from your vegan to your gluten free, I try, yeah. but I try to do that in real life too. We, we like just you know inviting people over to our house and having company over, and so I always have been you know mindful yeah. of people's food allergies and stuff yeah. like that. So same thing here. Yeah, you, <laughs> you so know, you, yeah. we got a small space, so yeah, limited. Yeah, options. and we know what you know that people do have food sensitivities yeah. and do have some dietary restrictions and some people you know they want vegan they want gluten free and they want uh you, you know certain certain foods but we also know that people come here and want some bacon and they want <laughs> some biscuits and you know somebody said the other day it was like this is gluten free somebody said yeah no i need my gluten so um, <laughs> I, need that gluten. <laughs> I need that gluten so um again so it's kind of like when you're in a diet that license to cheat yeah. So I don't know if this is Lynette's theory, but my theory is, um, well, we told you not to drink your calories because now we're offering you this healthy beverage with no sugar and zero calories. So you can have that bourbon muff- muffin with the bourbon drizzle and the extra butter yeah. because we just saved you 44 yeah, cal- right. forty four grams of carbohydrates because we didn't give you a large soda with that. Well, right. That teaspoon of sugar. Or that teaspoon of sugar in there. <laughs> so I think that we try to give people a healthy balance because we know people, listen, people come into tea shops, they come into coffee shops and they expect cake. Yeah. 
They expect cake, muffins, pastries, and all those mm -hmm. things. And we give you that here. We also give you a nice healthy salad. We also mm -hmm. give you um, a vegetarian sandwich, powerhouse sandwich. We yeah. also give you um, soups, very healthy soups. So we try to strike a balance in our menu. And this was the menu was a very tough thing for me and Lynette to agree on because I was like, we can't have bacon. And she's like, yeah, but people want bacon. You know, <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> Uh, but again, it was intentional, like our tea, that we have conversations with people to find out what they what they want and what they expect and what makes people happy and comfortable. So right. if you come in, you drink a nice pot of tea, a nice nice pot of Moroccan mint tea, and you want a breakfast sandwich with bacon and egg frittata and cheese. The egg frittata has vegetables in it. We got you, we got you there. Peppers and onions. Peppers and onions in there. <laughs> um, that's fine. That's on you if you want if you want a waffle with syrup and, and extra bacon. That's that's on you. It's, it's yeah. part of... It's a guilt-free zone. It's guilt-free zone, and, and it's you being your organic self and, it's, and being comfortable in my space, in our home. Yeah. 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 So, actually, you, you kind of answered that last question that I had in See, that, that, so that's, that's strong. <laughs> so, with it, I can actually hit these rapid-fire questions mm -hmm. if y'all ready to rock with mm -hmm. those. All right. These are all over the place? Him. Okay. Um, so, Eric. <laughs> yeah. Uh... Uh, favorite movie? Oh man, give me a genre. Um, action. Oh wow. Yeah, I'm gonna be one of those guys. That's tough because you know, again, you can define action. Eighties action. Eighties <laughs> action. I can keep going wow. specific. Raiders of the Lost Ark. That's a good one. My favorite movie, and, and Lynette's giving me the side eye. She's cutting an eye at me because she knows that the Godfather, Godfather. series is my favorite movies. Every single number time. two. Yeah, always. Number two is my favorite. Every time it comes on, there's three movies that every time they come on, I'm watching them. Godfather, Jaws, Do the Right Thing, um, Fridays. Fridays. I don't care what, what it is. It, <laughs> it's coming on. It's coming on. You know, so. So, Lynette, you got one? Uh, I'm sorry. What's favorite the question? Movie. Favorite movie? Yes. Oh, um, my trilogy. Love Jones, <laughs> mm -hmm. Mahogany, mm -hmm. and or Lady Sings the Blues, both of those. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, what's what's my other movie? Bingo Along, Travel All Stars, and Motor Kings. No, <laughs> <laughs> classic. If y'all haven't seen that, y'all gotta watch it. No, Love Jones, and what's my other movie? Oh um, no, it's your movie with uh, Tay Diggs. The Best man. Man. Brown sugar. Brown sugar. Brown sugar. Yes. <laughs> That's a dope soundtrack. Yes. Yeah. So, so those are mine. All right. Uh, let's see. I uh, got two more. Um, right. What's an item on the menu that? you're most proud of it doesn't have to be quote unquote the best item it doesn't have to be the most popular but you're like this was on there and i'm really invested in it and you know this is my thing i can take that one go ahead <laughs> so we were talking about the world of tea conference when we go to the world of tea conference we're always specific about things that we're looking for so one year we went looking for ginger products sure. right that's where we found those ginger shots but we also found, and I think we were on our way out the door, like we were done, we had done the whole convention center, and we found um, these ginger um, lattes. Mm. Uh, not, turmeric lattes. Turmeric lattes. Turmeric lattes. And man, oh man, I was like, this thing. And so we tried it there. They had a big craft of it. We, I, was, I kept going back, little <laughs> cups, those little yeah. one ounce cups. And so I started sourcing those. We were and literally tea drunk. Yeah. <laughs> after those. Those things have been very popular. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Turmeric latte. So that's like the golden milk, right? It's yes. like the golden milk. Yeah. Right. Yes. But yes. I think mine would be, it's tough, but I think the bourbon black tea might be one of my favorite. And yeah. I tell you why. When we, Again, at the World of Tea Conference, we came across this, someone that was blending some bourbon black tea and the way that it's created it's literally the black tea uh, combined with the, the the char of a of a bourbon barrel uh, the aroma That's from the true. char s absorbs into the tea and i'm not even a bourbon drinker but the aroma the smell of this was so delightful and the taste of it was like wow if if there's a bourbon drink, i tout it like like it's liquor 
literally, well, I'm telling people, oh, you got to try this bourbon tea um, mixed with the bourbon honey. I think it's, that that either hot or cold, yeah. it's a hot toddy this time of year. It is amazing, amazing, amazing tea. Yeah. You, you sold a ticket. I, I'm going to need yeah. that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah um, I, I, I'll throw this in there as an aside. It's so ridiculous. But when I became aware of the whole golden milk and all of that, mm-hmm. I had a buddy. Um, we used to trade spices at work. Ooh, and people would look okay. at us like, are you guys selling drugs? It's like, right, right. this is turmeric, baby. Like, right. you, and it's like turmeric, <laughs> flaxseed. And right. like, yeah, I got this Thai, um, this Thai ginger, bro. It's like, yeah. oh, I got this from Sri Lanka. Right? This yeah. is what we were doing, and it looked really sketchy. <laughs> that's yeah, a little funny. package you with. That's <laughs> funny because when we came from the World of Tea Conference, at the end of the last day of the conference, the first time we were. The first time we were. The last day of the conference, all these tea companies are literally giving away <laughs> baggies oh. of tea. I thought so he was talking about this, when we were blending. No, no. When, when they're giving away baggies of tea. Mm-hmm. So green tea in a baggie looks suspect as hell. It does. Right? So we've got all these baggies of tea, and I got a duffel bag. And I stuff all these baggies of tea in a duffel bag, and we go to the airport, and we're at TSA. I'm like, Lynette, I got a bag full of baggies of green stuff. We're going to get stopped. Push it to the limit was playing. I had it stuffed in my shoes. I was like, yo, I'm going to jail. I'm going to yep. jail for tea. Um, subsequently, they scanned it and nothing ever happened. I was like, Never Damn. even blinked an eye you at know, it. But it, it, it's, I understand when you and your, you and your friends are like trading off herbs. Mm-hmm. It does look sketchy well, as Well, you know, before we got our brick and mortar, we used to work uh, sometimes in, in our home. And we used to have those scales around the house of people <laughs> come over and be like, what are you doing exactly? That? What is that? Oh, this is, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is five pounds of green tea. Yeah. Is, you got a scale it? and little bat pouches? pouches? What are y'all doing? Are doing? I was making samples. I mean. You know. Right, right. So literally, literally, <laughs> literally, hand out little samples same. of tea. It's pure, uncut green tea. That's right, just, man, right. Study your right. wires. Right, I'm from Baltimore, baby. <laughs> so, so, so with that, um, I want to thank both of you for being on this podcast. Uh, this great. Oh, you got you got one more thing. I do. Please have a, have a little plug. Yeah. So maybe by the time your podcast airs, uh-huh. we have another project that we're, we're working do on. Do we want to share that? Yes, we can share. Okay. okay. So, um, so through this journey, this summer has been amazing for us. We've gotten, um, you know, we've gotten a few articles, a few write-ups, and you know, a few spots. Um, but one of the biggest things w- that we got was a BGE twenty k grant. Yeah. Right. Do anything you want to do with it. Expand That's what they business. Yeah. And so we decided to expand our business. We thought about doing a mobile truck. We thought about maybe buying some of these vacant properties. But I think what we ended up settling on was opening another brick and mortar store. Nice. So it is. It will not be a tea shop. It won't be a cafe, but it will have tea. And we're calling it uh, Vinyl and Pages. Vinyl it is pages. a book store, music store tea shop that'll be right next door to our location here at 409 North House she will be at 407 mm-hmm. um, and so we're really excited about it because it allows us to expand our offerings to do exactly what you said mm-hmm. we're doing now mm-hmm. to be more of a community space to you know center it around tea as the foundation but now to offer more art space for artists to Mm -hmm. offer space for authors and musicians because we'll be selling books and music and create more of a more of a you know to increase the uh the awareness of not only tea but to the local art scene and the local music scene um i think it's a a good place for bromo arts district has has really kind of been exploding lately with the arts walks and and just people finding out and, and discovering Bromo Arts District. Um, we had a thing here about two weeks ago where we invited some creatives and some artists, and most of the people here were from out of state. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, we didn't know. We didn't know about Bromo. We didn't know that these kinds of things were here. And so it's an opportunity for them to discover 
this area yeah. and also to meet other creatives you know like minded creatives so yeah and, and we want to do stuff like that in this new space so we're looking very very forward to it we are curating the the, the vinyl collection we're curating the book selections um, we'll also be a space for local makers too mm -hmm. so we'll have shelf space for folks that you know like us when we started out somebody gave us the opportunity to put our five little tees on their shelves <laughs> yeah. uh, we want to give people the opportunity to put some of their wares on our shelves too and, and be and have a location uh, and be a part of what of what this foundation and this community space will be yeah so we're excited 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 about it I don't know who's gonna work there you know but <laughs> we'll, we'll figure Hi. it out right so <laughs> That's that's great, and yeah. congratulations yeah. on the the, the expansion. And yes, I, I love that, and um, yeah, I mean, I always like going to a place that has music, that has vital, has these other things. It extends to the idea of made in Baltimore, extends to the idea of community. So mm -hmm. that's great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So with that, okay. um, I want to thank both of you for coming onto the podcast, oh, and and. Um, Feel free to, to tell the fine folks where uh, the listeners where to follow you on social media, website, uh, address, all of that good stuff. We are at C U P L E S T E A, Couples T. We're also at www.couplesteahouse.com. And again, it is spelled C U P L E S T E A. <laughs> so there you have it folks I want to again thank Lynette and Eric Dotson for coming on to the podcast Couples Tea, Couples Tea, Couples Tea and I'm Rob Lee saying that there is tea, community, art in and around your neck of the woods you just gotta look for it <laughs> <laughs>